Hey everyone, welcome to the next part of my Happy Tutorial series where now we're going to be going on loading dynamic pages and we're going to be doing that using the Happy plugin called Vision. And so what Vision basically is, is it allows us to use um, template and template engines in our Happy application. And what basically a template engine is, it just basically allows us to add code to our HTML file. So like I showed in the previous video, something like this. Like say you can load name dynamically as to who is the user that is logged in. And so to start using this plugin, of course, the first thing we have to do is install it. And so we will do npm install at happy dash vision, because the plugin is called vision. And so then once it's installed, of course, you know the drill, we have to register it with our server. So let's go in here and let's do another object. And we use the plugin key, if you remember, to register. And we will do um, require. And then it should show up at happy dash vision, just like this. So now that we've actually installed our plugin, the next thing we need to do is actually install our template engine. And so what we're going to be using in this is a template engine called Handlebars. So we're going to install it by npm install Handlebars. And so this is not a happy plugin, so we don't register it to the server. But what we do do is we need to make it. Um, available to our happy vision and available to our server and you do this through the server dot views method and so you go like this and then what we need to do is we use the key engines and then we pass it an object and these are all the extensions that will be rendered by our um, the template engine that we chose and so we're using handlebars and so we would do template engine require and handlebars just like this and now the next thing we should do is if you can remember what we did with inert is we set a default route for all the static paths. So we did here, we did routes, files, relative to path.join, dir name, and static. And so we're going to do the same thing with views, except it's a different object structure for views. And what you do is it is the key path. So after here engines, you make a comma like this, and then you pass the key path and then you require the location of where your views are. But we're not going to be doing this in the static folder. We're going to make another folder in here to hold all our dynamic pages. And we're going to call that views. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to create a new folder. And I'll just call it views. And then within here, we can just type in the location views. Because we are using path, the path module, we can join it to our current directory and then just attach on views right here. So we'll be able to locate it for any of our HTML files. So now let's create a file in this views folder that we can render dynamic data in. So I'm just going to create a new file in here and I'm just going to call it index.html. And then let's just do the defaults here. And so when you are using handlebars, the way it works is you a handlebars expression is surrounded by brackets like this. And what goes in here will be what will be rendered when this whole template is rendered. So for example, we can do hello like this. And so to actually link this to our server, what we're going to do is we're going to create a route. So right here, let's create a route. Just call it server.route. Let's make the method, of course, will be get because we're retrieving this web page. Then let's do the path. Let's make it dash dynamic. Just because we're going to be viewing dynamic data. And then for our hander, handler, let's do the usual request h arrow syntax. And so what we do here is, if you remember, what we did in inert is we return h.file. Whereas for vision, what you return instead is h.view. So it'll basically be doing the same thing. And then you pass the name of the file. And then the data here is important. This is what will be rendered in here. And the way the data works is you should send it as an object with keys. So the key that will be rendered will be name. So say, let's create an object, const data. And let's set that equal to name. Let's do wit code like this. And so what basically happens is when we go to the dynamic, this data will be sent along with this web page and it will get rendered here based off the key name, which is right here. And another reason is that it can actually find index.html is because you remember with our server for views, we made it so that all by default, all our dynamically rendered pages should be in this views folder. So when we do it, it'll look in here and it'll look for index.html and then it'll do all this. So what we should do now is let's save this. Let's run it with, let's run our node monitor on our server.js and let's see what we get. 
Um, so of course I got an unexpected token because what I did is I created, an, I actually used server.route and what I should have done is just done the usual I'm adding as an array. So I'm just adding another one here. Okay, so now let's serve, save it. We have no errors this time and let's go to our page and I believe it was dash dynamic. Cool, and so you can see we have hello wit code. And so now if we go back, and we change it to, I don't know, Greg or something like that. We load it back up, we go back here, reload, and you can see now it's hello Greg. So now let's do something a little more interesting. So you can remember in the last video what we did is we checked if the payload that came from this form here was equal to wit code and 1234 and then we would redirect them to logged.html which would say welcome wit code but it did that not dynamically it did it statically and so what we can do here is we can do it dynamically now that we have vision and so a way to do this is we can do return h.view and then of course our index file because that's what's being tracked by our server for rendering views engines and then what we were going to do is we can pass the key username and then if you can remember the way to get that was um, the post data is from the payload object and then the name from the form and the name from the form which follows it this one here is username so we're going to access that through request.payload.username and we're setting the key to username and now let's save this and let's um, redo this so if we type in wit code and then the password doesn't matter now because we're not checking for anything let's just do something like that you can see actually it's not being displayed and the reason for this is because remember how I said the key has to match here you can see we're using hello name when here we're using the key username so what we can do is we can just add tag on user to this and then now that we've um, saved that those should match we can go back to our login form now let's try it again so wit code 1234 and log in and so you can see once again this did not work and this can be pretty frustrating something you can even do is if you even hard refresh the page it still might not work and the reason around this actually has to do with the way we've been using nodemon so this should be loading but what happens is nodemon isn't tracking our html files and so the way to do this is when we set it up but usually we just do server.js we can specify what files we want it to track by using the argument um, dash e and so what we want is not just our javascript also html JavaScript and then we will do server.js and so now when we do that it should also update our HTML files so then it should actually display so if we go back to our page and go back to the front just type in this and let's log in again with code just whatever password and now it's working so what you should do is also with uh, Nodemon, you can spe specify what file extensions you want to be updated automatically when you refresh or save your pages. And now one other thing I want to go over is so if you can remember when we were setting up our template engine with our server, we were using, dot, we were using HTML files, but we were actually using handlebars. So it makes more sense to actually use handlebars and the extension for that is HBS. So now what we would have to do though is we would have to change our index.html file to a hbs file so we just do this bs cool and you can see the little mustache here and it's the same thing but now if we had this kept as html and we changed that to hbs this would not render properly and now also as i changed the extension to hbs if you remember what i did with nomon as well if we are going to restart the server we should do hbs comma js and then server.js so now we are tracking hbs files when they update and we're no longer using html for a dynamic page so it doesn't really matter but so if let's reload this and now one of the final things i want to show you with vision is using a default layout so in most web pages if you look at our welcome.html our home page here we have the home users and location what would be nice if we had this say on the top of every page because in most websites you know you have the tab up here that stays on every single page you can do that with vision and you do that with the key called layout and then you specify the path to the um, default file that you want to be basically rendered in um, every other file or you want every other file to be the con dynamic content in that but this is the backbone it'll, it'll make more sense with an example so what we're going to do is we're going to create a file here and we're going to call it default.hbs 
and we're calling it default.hps because that is the name that we are specifying for layout. So default has to match here. And what we want to do is every single one of our pages, we want to have this here where you can click on home, users, and location. So let's take that and let's paste that in here. And so now what this means is every page that we load with default.hps or every dynamic page that we load with views will have this displayed. So if we go back now um, to our form and let's try logging in again, just like this, you can see, okay, so this is displayed, right? But we don't have that hello wit code anymore or hello to the person who's logged in. And this is because we need to specify the where the content will go. So this is the backbone. This will be shown on every dynamic page, but we need to specify with three curly braces in the word content where our, it was index.hbs, where all this will go. And we can also delete all this because this is all already rendered. So for example, this hello, having this like this, will basically, when it's rendered, it'll cut this and it'll paste it in here, just like that but we are not doing that because we can do it dynamically now. So put these back the way they were. And now if we go back to our web page, let's go to the main page and let's log in with code one, two, three, four. Hello, with code. And we still have this up here. And so because these are loaded with the inert and the other and not with the vision, if we click on them, for example, we don't have those loaded there. So what we can also do is we can change our logged in or our routes here. If we wanted to do the same with them, we would have to put them in our views folder and um, render them that way as content. So let's do that with one of our files. So if you look in here, for example, I think it was location, which is all the way down here. We'll clean these up at some point, but so all the way down here, we had this route. Your location is not enabled by default. What we could do is we could turn this into an HBS file. So let's call it location.hbs like this and what we want to display is the request dot location so if that happens we will return h dot view and instead of index what we will return is location and the data will be let's return just an object like this a key location and request dot location and if not we'll return let's do h dot H dot view. Once again, let's return the location, but instead of specifying the location, because it wasn't enabled by default, we can just do say your location is not enabled. Just like this. And so now what we've done this, what we need to actually do is go into our location and let's create an H1 tag. And then if you turn remember, the way to display content with handlebars is in between these two brackets. So we just have H1 location. And because we're using default in our server as the, where is it, as the layout, we don't have to worry about all the rest of these tags because this, once again, the location will just show right here. And now it should work. So let's go here. Let's go back to our main page. Let's type in wit code, just like this. We can see hello wit code, and now if we go to location, oh, we returned an object. What are we doing here? Oh yeah, so we returned request.location. That does return an object, and I believe it's IP and bogon. So if we do request.location.ip, we reload that. Now let's see what happens if we refresh. 127.0.0.1. Cool. Then we can go back to home. So you can see the website is, it's pretty, it's not very good, but it, you can see it's coming together. So let's log in again. Hello, wit code. What's your location? Just like that. Okay. So what we've been doing is we've just been hard coding our data so far. And so the next thing that we want to do is we want to connect to a database so we can store this and have Basically, um, we can keep information about our users and things like that. So in the next video, I'm going to be showing you how to connect to a database with Happy, and then we'll go from there.